for introductions. It's now time for member statements. The member from Leeds, Grenville. Thank you, Speaker. I rise in support of parents, students, and rural communities in a desperate fight to save their schools. Ten schools in Leeds, Grenville are among the 29 identified for closure by the Upper Canada District School Board. Hundreds more are at risk in communities across Ontario. Speaker, this is not just about saving individual schools. It's a fight for the future of rural education and the ability of students to learn close to where they live. Last week, I wrote the Minister of Education and called on her to do two things. Restore the top-up funding they cut to put so many schools on the chopping block and suspend the rigged process this government manipulated to allow boards to fast-track closures. I've also asked the Upper Canada trustees to support my request by resolution and to suspend their accommodation review. I will not allow this government to sit on the sidelines as communities are thrown into turmoil. No one disputes the need to discuss the future of education in a time of declining enrollment, but we demand, Speaker, a fair process. Let's take the target off schools and work with parents, boards, municipalities and MPPs from all parties to develop a long-term solution. If this government chooses to sit back and allow these schools to close, it will be too late. Speaker, if they value rural education, they must act now. Thousands of parents and students await a response. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. A few things uh, on issues of galvanized Ontarians, like the plight of the young Indigenous inmate Adam Capay. Adam, 23 years old, has been in solitary confinement in an Ontario provincial prison for four years. He's housed alone in a basement at the end of a long corridor in a cell sheathed in plexiglass. The lights are on 24 hours a day. Uh, he's, they found him, uh, in fact, to have memory orientation, speech problems brought on by his prison conditions. Prison conditions, by the way, Mr. Speaker, that are considered torture uh, by the UN and others. He's also legally innocent. He was charged with first-degree murder in 2012, but he has not been tried. Uh, the Supreme Court of Canada says that any delay between the laying of charges and the completion of trial longer than 30 months is a violation of an accused person's charter right to be tried within a reasonable time. He's been held without trial for 50 two months. Uh, we give thanks to the prison guard who brought this plight to the attention of Ontario's Chief Human Rights Commissioner, but it shouldn't have to take that, Mr. Speaker. This is egregious. This makes us look terrible on a world stage. This is terrible, and the public demand is immediate it, that the inhuman treatment of him, be re, uh, that he be released from solitary, given medical care by the end of this week, uh, not just for an interim period, and that those who allowed this to happen be held to account. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Mississauga Brampton South. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to share with this House a much anticipated and exciting news. On October 26, the constituents of my great riding of Mississauga and Brampton South and surrounding communities learned that our government will be bringing a university-led post-secondary site to Brampton. This initiative by our government is significant as it will pave way for coming generations towards better and brighter future through higher learning. The institution's main focus will be on science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. As Ontario moves towards a technology and knowledge-based economy, this institution will prepare students for jobs of today and jobs of tomorrow and offer them opportunities for training and skills development needed for leading sectors of our economy. This institution will also address the needs of an underserved but fast-growing population area and ensure that students find more educational opportunities closer to home. Mr. Speaker, Bramptonians are excited about our government's this initiative towards building dynamic and vibrant communities and great places to live, work, and study. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member Bruce Gray, Owen South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to offer congratulations and appreciation to Marilyn Morris, 
her organizing committee, and volunteers who ensured that the 20th annual Meaford Scarecrow Invasion and Family Festival was a huge success in my riding of Bruce Gray Owen Sound. 300 scarecrows took to the streets on September 30th in celebration of the fall harvest, and the town was decorated to the nines with scarecrows hanging from every streetlight and pole in the community. The OPP Golden Helmet motorcycle riders even had scarecrows adorning their bikes during their performance. Since its inception in 1996, this family event has become a popular destination for locals and tourists, and has received both community and provincial awards, ranking as one of Ontario's top events. All the hard work and dedication by the organizers, the hundreds of volunteers, the generosity of sponsors, and the enthusiasm of the entire community is the reason why the Scarecrow Invasion and Family Festival has earned this recognition over the past 20 years. In 2002, the Scarecrow Invasion tried to challenge the record for most scarecrows in the Guinness Book of World Records. Meaford created 2,221 scarecrows, but the record was not achieved. Wow. Now, in its 20th year, the invasion has 300 volunteers dedicating over 3,000 hours. Mr. Speaker, I would also like to pay a special tribute to a Meaford businessman who is honoured for his role in starting the Scarecrow Invasion 20 years ago. George Potopnik was one of the 60 to 70 guests attending the 20th anniversary of the Scarecrow Invasion and Family Festival in the Gallery of Meaford Hall. I invite the House to join me in congratulating Marilyn Mor Morris, George Potopnik, and the entire Meaford community for ensuring the Meaford Scarecrow Invasion and Family Festival achieve top honours and wish them much continued success. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from London, Fanshawe. Speaker, I'm honoured to speak today about a pilot project happening in my riding. The program is called Positive Voice, and it has been organised by the staff at the No Way Employment and Education Centre in London, Fanshawe. The main philosophy of the program aims to provide a safe space for the mentorship and empowerment of urban Aboriginal women. The organizer achieve, organizers achieve this through assisting Aboriginal women in developing positive life narratives and positive community connections through the use of media and technologies. The program helps to empower women participants as they transition into different educational or employment opportunities. I recently visited the centre and attended one of their sessions. I was immediately impressed and captivated by the women I met and the enormous impact the program has in their lives. The women I met came from different places and backgrounds. They ranged in age from their early 20s to their, early to their 50s. They had all overcome their own individual adversities, but they all shared a common goal to succeed in the next chapter of their lives. It was clear this program was helping them to do just that. I would like to commend Nokikwe and the organizers of the Positive Voice program for providing women the opportunity to share their stories, develop their skills, and find the confidence in their abilities to succeed. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I rise today to extend my congratulations and best wishes to Ossington Pentecostal Church for my riding of Davenport that will be celebrating their 60th anniversary this weekend. In particular, I would like to congratulate the congregation, who will be holding a fantastic celebration with a Mass and a reception. Ossington Pentecostal Church is a member of the Canadian Assemblies of God and our biblically-centred congregation of believers who come from a wide variety of nationalities and cultures, yet they all share one thing in common. They worship Jesus Christ. The founding congregation of the Ossington Pentecostal Church was a part of the first Italian work in 1922 that was called Assemblea Cristiana under the combined leadership of Rev. Ferdinando Safuto and Rev. Luigi Polito. In 1956, a group for the Assemblea Cristiana built and established the church that exists today, located at 686 Ossington Avenue. In February 2003, Reverend David Quackenbosch joined Ossington Pentecostal Church to shepherd the congregation. Today, all sorts of people join this church in prayer on Sundays and are currently going under renovations to the facility to accommodate and better service the members of the community. And as the member of Provincial Parliament for Davenport, I'm privileged to represent a number of very active and engaged constituents, including the religious community of Ossington Pentecostal Church, and I want to thank them and the congregation for the commitment to our community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for your member statements. The member from Foreign Hill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. We're all wearing our poppies today, and it's so wonderful to see Remembrance Days next week, and it's a sad and solemn time, but it really brings the communities together. I want to read a, it's a poem, but actually a song, but I'm going to spare you my singing voice. I know we're not allowed to sing here, Mr. Speaker. It's by my niece, Ella Gladstone Martin, and it's called Don't Let Me Be Forgotten. 
Poppies don't grow on hidden graves. Am I, the on am I only worth something when I can be brave? We can't surrender, lest we regret. We must remember, lest we forget. Don't let me be forgotten. Don't let me fall behind, because there's no run from the battle waging inside my mind. These wounds take time to heal before my scars can just scab and peel. Don't ask me why. I do not know. It's much too soon to say goodbye. But you just stand there and watch me go. Don't let me be forgotten. Don't let me fall behind because there's no running from the battle waging inside my mind. I put you first. Now, aren't I worth just a bit of your time? If you give me your hand, I will give you mine. Don't let me be forgotten. Don't let me fall behind, because there's no running from the battle waging in my mind. So let's all remember um, today and next week, which hopefully we're going to be bringing forward this week, to have Remembrance Week, as the schools often do commemorate things and the legions for the whole week of Remembrance Day. Um, let's remember, let's not forget, and let's remember also what they were fighting for, our democracy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My compliments to your niece. Further member statements, the member from Temiskimi, Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. For the first time in my time in the legislature, I'm going to quote a Toronto Star headline, Mighty Ontario Moose Need Our Help to Survive. And as a uh, Representative of people who moose hunting is part of our culture. I think moose hunters across the province, no one wants the long-term survival of the moose more than the population who have hunting as part of their heritage. And there's some things that the government, and it's not all the government's fault, but there's some things that the government could do immediately to help with this. And it is, it is a crisis. The first thing is adequately fund the MNR. Because in my part of the world, we have two conservation officers over 50 townships. So you cannot manage a population, wildlife population, when you're spread so thin. The MNR has to take steps to actually make accurate counts of the moose. Unit 28, the most heavily hunted area, there's supposed to be a count every three years, and they did it over five years. Again, if this is a crisis, we need to spend the time and the money to do this right. All moose, all moose harvested should be reported, regardless of who harvests them. And there's a kind of a funny line in there. It says, in some parts of the province, moose used to be so plentiful that there's road signs warning against drivers hitting them. I can assure you there's still moose because I hit one a month ago, and I'd like to thank Frank and Evelyn Barassa for saving the meat and for cooking me some great meat pies. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Eglinton Lawrence. Uh, to uh, give tribute to uh, one of our longtime uh, workers here, staff support workers, uh, who's worked here for 20 years, uh, Joseph Galuzzo. Uh, Joe, uh, I knew him when he used to own a grocery store at Scarlet Road in Eglinton, did that with his brother for many years, then he came on here to work in the precinct properties branch, and he's one of the many incredible dedicated workers we have here who take care of our heating, our cleaning, our plumbing, uh, furniture removal setup. We've got a real uh, crew of dedicated professional support staff here at Queen's Park, and Joe has been one of them, uh, and he's loved every day that he's been here as he run into Joe in the hallways. He's always got a smile on his face. He's always happy to work. The only thing I mention about Joe, too, is that he, along with the other staff workers here, do the same work as the staff support workers at City Hall in Toronto down the road, yet they make 5 to $10 less an hour than the same people doing the same work down the street. And I think we should all be cognizant of that, uh, especially the uh, Board of Internal Economy. Sure, uh, we've had a wage freeze here for seven years, but it's not right to freeze the wages of the workers and support staff. It's about time we gave them a decent wage for the work they do as the workers get down the street. Thank you. I, uh, I have nothing but admiration for Joe as well, and we wish him well in his retirement. The member from Scarborough Rouge River on a point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very, very happy to welcome the students from my writing. They are grade five. Uh, C.D. Ferguson Junior Public School, and I hope all the students have a great experience at the Ontario Provincial Parliament in the House. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank all members for their statements. Therefore, it's now time for reports by committees.